Good afternoon. My name is Professor Neil Pillar. I'm Director of the Lymphedema Clinical Research Unit in the College of Medicine and Public Health at Flinders University. And thank you very much for allowing me to talk to you this afternoon uh, about the lymphatic system and about lymphedema and your risk of getting it. And in particular, what you can do to make a difference, to give you a better outcome and to give you confidence and the ability to manage along with your health professional, along with your partner or your carer, or just on your own, to, to give you a better opportunity and ability and knowledge to manage your lymphedema. So why must we pay more attention to the lymphatic system? Well, number one, the lymphatics are a sewage system. If the sewage system is not working, you know what happens. It's pretty significant. And the lymphatics takes away all the waste products from the, 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 the metabolism of the body, all the waste products that otherwise would be sitting around the cells and the tissues in the body, making them un unhappy. Good lymph flow, therefore, is needed for good cell health. If we have slow lymph flow, what it means is more fat deposits. And that's bad news because that means the lymphedema will progress because little fat cells called adipocytes get bigger and bigger and bigger and more of them tend to form. Also, reduced lymph flow means more infections because your lymphatic system is important for controlling your infections, your immune system, making your immune system stronger if it's working well. If it's not, your immune system is very weak and you're more prone to infections and other problems. Now let's have a look at the overview of your lymphatic system. What you can see here is a picture of the lymphatic system of the whole body. And what we're going to do today is discuss the lymphatic system drainage from the left and right arms. But uh, what we're going to have a look at is the way in which the lymph drains from the arms. And it drains into an area here from the left arm at the left shoulder, where you can see my laser pointer, and at the right arm here in the right shoulder. So knowing about this system here and knowing about where it drains into, which is the blood vessels, the veins here in the chest, can help you better understand it and can help you understand how things like breathing can make a difference, how a bra might actually compromise lymphatic drainage because of straps up here and the shoulder and all those sort of things. So it's about the big picture stuff, thinking, assessing and acting holistically. Now, why the big picture? Well, we need in the lymphatic system to empty where the lymph needs to go to, empty the buckets first. You know, if I've got a bucket full of water, I can't put any more water in it until I empty it out. And the same applies to the lymphatic system. We've got to empty out wherever we want the fluid and the waste products and the sewage to go before it can flow. So we have to create a space for the lymph and its contents to flow into. And that's what a lot of our therapies will do, empty the buckets. And that's what you need to learn to do, because if you do it well, the lymph will flow down a pressure gradient into an area where there's no fluid, no wastes, nothing. And um, it's the same principle as water flowing down a hose or anything like that you might be using in the, in the garden. Let's have a look at lymphatic drainage areas of your arm. See here, what we've got is a picture of lymphatic drainage territories, they're called. There's three in the upper arm generally and three in the lower arm generally. But sometimes your whole arm might become swollen or sometimes only one little part like this inside of the arm or the inside of the, the forearm or your hand or perhaps your chest here on this side. And that's because the lymphatic drainage, the lymphatic vessels from a particular part of your body are not working well. So that's why understanding these lymphatic drainage areas and lymphatic territories is important. One may be blocked, others may be working. And if there's a blocked one, sometimes we can divert the fluid from a blocked one to an unblocked one and it'll help overcome our problem. So that's what the learning program is about today. Now, our lymphatic system that we're interested in is above the deep, mu the, deep the muscles. So where my laser is now is the top of the muscles that our skeletal muscles that help us move. So the area in lymphedema that that's, gets affected is the area above the muscles. It's called epifascial. But that's where all our major lymph vessels are. And you see here these big lymph collectors just attached above the muscles. You see here some joins between one big lymph collector and another called an anastomosis. And it's these which are very important in our management and control of lymphedema, opening these up. That's what surgeons also try to do is open up some of these anastomoses or create new ones so that when one area is blocked, like where my laser is at the moment, we can bypass it and come around here to another area. 
So this is where the lymphatic system becomes a problem when it's not working properly above the muscles. I'm not saying that there's no damage to the lymphatic system below the muscles, but here's where it becomes a bit of a problem for us. Now have a look at this. This is the lymphatic system. This is how it's actually working. And what we see here is the functioning lymphatic system. You see here these fibers going into the tissues. They open and close the cells which cover our lymphatic system uptake area called lymphatic capillaries. And when we change the pressure on these little fibrils here, we can make it easier for the fluids and the waste products to go into our lymphatic system. And we'll see that a little bit later. But our main aim is to help the lymphatic fluids move into and along our lymphatic system. Okay, take all those waste products away, take them down deeper into the tissues where these very small lymphatic vessels go down deeper and deeper. And as we go down deeper, we see there's muscles in their walls. And as we see more and more muscles, we see that they can contract and relax about 15 times per minute, 10 to 15 times per minute. Uh, on average, sometimes a little bit slower, but they take away all the fluids and the waste products back into the veins again. Very important that they work. It's your sewage system of the body. So in perspective, this is what we're going to be looking at again, the lymphatic drainage areas of your arms and where it goes into and how we can actually improve that lymphatic system drainage of your arms if it's been damaged or affected by radiation or by surgery, or it's just not working as well as it should be. So here we go again, having a quick look at that. We're going down into the skin, down into the tissues just above, below the skin, looking at our lymphatic vessels, looking now at what happens when we vary our muscles, when the fluids move into the lymphatics, all the waste products, all the sewage goes into the lymphatics, is taken down deeper into the tissues where the lymphatics start pumping, and they start pumping it away from the body area where the fluid entered them. That's what's important. Get the fluid and the waste products and the sewage into the lymphatics and it will take it away. OK, and that's what it's all about. That's what. edema treatments about. Let's look at factors which determine lymph load. Well, one of the most important things is that blood pressure has a, an important impact on lymph load. The higher your blood pressure, the more the lymph load. So this gives you a leverage point. If you're slightly hypertensive, high blood pressure, reducing that in conjunction with visits to your GP may reduce lymph load. If you've got blood vessels that are very leaky, for instance, you bruise easy, Fixing that, making them stronger, might actually help reduce the lymph load. If you've got lots of big molecules, that is proteins in the tissues, then that might attract little molecules like water. One big protein molecule can attract about 2 million small molecules. Okay, that's amazing what you can do. So if we get rid of the big molecules, then things are looking better. Also, our number of active capillaries. The more active we are, if we're doing this for a long, long time, then a lot of our blood vessels are going to be open. And that's going to supply energy to our muscles and our cells that need it. But, you know, that puts more of a load on the lymphatic system. So it's OK to do exercise. But with lymphatics, when they're a problem, when they're damaged a little bit, you have to warm down or cool down slowly. Get in there and just do it, but cool down slowly. The other thing which determines lymph load is fats in the diet. They're more relevant to those with lymphatic problems of the legs. But some fats are big molecules and they have to be absorbed by the lymphatic system and it puts more of a load on it when you've got them in your diet. And also the important thing is some medications like calcium CCTs, calcium channel um, blockers. Um, what they will do is sometimes put more load on our lymphatic system. So sometimes talking to your GP and changing your medications can reduce the lymph load. Okay, what factors determine lymph flow? Number one, lymph load. The more we put into the lymphatic system, the better it will work if it can. And that's what we're all about today. So what else determines lymph flow? Well, the pumping of the lymph collectors. You saw them pumping in that picture a little bit earlier. OK, they pump. The more we put into them, the faster they pump. So we've got to load the lymphatic system. That's really, really important. 
also the activity of our skeletal muscles. The, if we move like this, you're actually helping load the lymphatic system and helping the lymph move along those lymphatic vessels. Also, the more we breathe, the better we breathe, the deeper we breathe, the more reflective our breathing, like in yoga or tai chi or qigong, the better the lymph drainage will be. So breathing is really important. The other one that's going to affect us is the pressure exerted by surrounding structures. And we'll talk about that later. Your bra, its side panels, its straps may be compromising lymph flow by putting external pressure on, on the lymphatic vessels. And that's something important to remember. Let's just talk about our lymphatic system. It's basically a low pressure system, not like our blood pressure. You know, your blood pressure is 120 over 80. Lymphatic system pressure might be in the region of 10 or 20 or 30 millimeters of mercury, not like blood pressure. It's very small volume. About 100 mils per day drains out of our arms, two to four liters total in our whole body. Not much, is it? It's also a very slow flowing system and slow acting system. OK, but it's essential for a good immune response and essential for the health of your cells and everything around them. Um, and that's what's important. That's why you must make sure if the lymphatic system is damaged or slow or not working well, we need to get it working better. And you can all do that quite easily because when you do that, that will help control any swelling through improving the well-being of the tissues. Let's just have a look what happens when you have radiotherapy. Uh, what radiotherapy causes is the buildup of fibrous tissue here. OK, and you can imagine that's going to stop these vessels from pulsating. If you've had surgery, what happens is that the surgeon necessarily cuts away lymph vessels and lymph nodes. And what will happen is the, the lymphatic system might generally find a new pathway to go. And that's what therapists aim to do, too, is to try and find some new pathways. And that's what new types of surgery called lymphovenous anastomoses try to do. They open up and create new pathways between a dysfunctional lymphatic vessel here with my laser, you can see it, and a one that's functioning well. So, you know, that's what happens and that's how it can be remediated. Why does lymphedema occur? It's because, as I mentioned, large lymph vessels and nodes are removed. Lymph vessels are damaged or constrained by the fibrous tissue, like you saw in that picture, or there's an underlying genetic issue. In other words, your genes are such, you're not to blame, it's your genes which mean the lymphatic system hasn't developed properly or it can't pump properly. And therein lies a bit of a problem, but we can still make a difference to the lymphatic system. Very, very important that we can make a difference, irrespective of your genetics. Here's a picture now showing where lymphedema is. And I just wanted to emphasize again that it's a superficial problem. You see here the bone, you see here the muscle. OK, it's the same in a lymphedema limb as it is in a normal limb. But what's different is the surrounding structure, the fluidy, the fatty area above the muscle, but below the skin. That's where the changes are in lymphedema. And in a way, because it's superficial, that is surface related, it's easy for us to see, unfortunately, but it's easy for us to manage, fortunately, so we can make a difference to it. Now, I wanna emphasize that not everyone will develop lymphedema after treatment for the breast cancer, which is absolutely necessary. About 20% of those who receive radiotherapy and have had a lot of lymph nodes taken out, sometimes called an auxiliary clearance, will get lymphedema at some stage of their life. And about 3% if you've only had one or two or three or four lymph nodes taken out and maybe no radiotherapy or very targeted radiotherapy. So it's not a lot, it's not a high incidence, but nevertheless, we can do it, we can make a difference. If you've got lymphedema, we can reduce its severity. If you're at risk of it, we can reduce the risk in those 20%. And maybe it won't in the future be 20% getting it because we'll be better off at being proactive. That's what it's all about. The other important thing is assessing your risk, knowing your risk. And I'm going to make all of our risk assessment forms available for you through the BCNA. You can have a look at them, see what your risk factors are and reduce those risks. And here they are here. You see in this form, don't worry about looking at the details now, but you can see that there are some things you can't control and there are some things you can control. Knowing and looking at these things you can control will allow you to reduce the risk of your lymphedema worsening or of your lymphedema developing. That's really important. Let's just look at some of those risk factors so you've got a feeling of them. Skin quality. The skin is a barrier between the external environment where all the bugs live and our internal body uh, where we try to maintain, maintain good health. Blood pressure. Okay. If we've got high blood pressure, 
um, then obviously there's more load on our lymphatic system. If our blood vessels are a little bit weak, again, more load on our lymphatic system. Make them stronger and that'll be fine. There are, there are medications out at the moment like paraben fort and, and bruises, which can help you make the blood vessels stronger. If you have an infection, then there'll be more load on our lymphatic system. You know, when you look at an infected wound, it's red, it's angry, there's fluid in it. Okay, we've got to try and um, treat those infections early on with antiseptics or antibiotics. Uh, if we are heavier, if we've got more weight, yes, there's more tissue from which fluids have to be removed, more load on our lymphatic system. And if we have some fats, they put more load on the lymphatic system. But this is more important for the lymphatic system draining the legs than it is for the arms. And lastly, but not least, if we've got something wrong with our blood vessels, our venous system, our veins, okay, if they're not draining properly because we've got, say, congestive cardiac failure or issues, then or high venous pressures, then that may mean more load on our lymphatic system. But you know, knowing these allows you and us and the therapist to modify them and control them and change them. So look at these things, talk to your GP about them if you're not sure about how to deal with them yourself. So basically, we therefore have to make sure that we do have a relationship with our therapist, our health professional, our GP, and I know sometimes in your areas, it's difficult to see a good therapist and hard to see GPs when you want to. But nevertheless, we need to have a discussion about our family, our medical, our surgical and history and our medications. Because these, some of these can influence the lymphatic system, the load on the lymphatic system or the ability of the lymphatic system to work. So you know, having a record of family history of limb swellings, is there an underlying genetic issue? A medical history. What other surgeries have you had? Have you had, say, shoulder surgery or shoulder, shoulder damage or a frozen shoulder before? Because that may influence your lymphedema. And knowing and having a record of them means we can actually make a, a, a better decision about what the treatment is, is good for you. And as I mentioned, some medications will put an increased load on our lymphatic system, like calcium channel blockers and those sort of things. Change them may reduce the load and can make a difference. So knowing all of these things is important because it can tell you about other reasons for the swelling. Is your thyroid functioning well? If not, maybe you need some management of it. Are your blood vessels working well? Are they strong enough? Is your blood pressure and heart working well? If not, managing it may reduce the load on the lymphatic system. Are there genetic issues with your lymphatic system? Okay, we can't change them, but we can be aware of them and react to them. So just remember each of these things here your thyroid, your heart, your blood pressures, may be underlying lymphedema. And once you manage these things better, perhaps, you may find it easier to manage your lymphedema. In fact, the lymphedema may even resolve. So in terms of your lymphedema, knowing what's going on, there are lots of things we can do. And if you have a chance to visit a therapist in Perth or somewhere else, then they may undertake bioimpedance measurements. They might do volume and circumference measurements. They might do pyrometry or interometry and they'll learn a lot about your lymphedema. You need to keep a record of that, but you know, they're clinic based and you can't always do them when you're in a remote area or therapists up there may not have them. So what it comes down to is other measurements that you or your partner or a carer can take or make. And you know, as a simple pitting test, you can actually press your thumb into different parts of your arm and see if there's a difference between your affected and non-affected arm. If you leave an indent mark after you've pressed it for about 60 seconds, then you can say, well, there's fluid there in that particular part. And that might help you respond to it a little bit better. Um, likewise, there is the stemosine test. Um, this is a test where you pick up the, the, the tissues, the skin, if you like, between your thumb and forefinger in different parts and just see, is there an ability to pick up your skin or not? If the, you can't pick up your skin, then there's likely to be a lot of fiber there. Or if your affected limb is, is harder to pick up than your unaffected limb, maybe there's a little bit of excess fibrosis. And that can help us decide on what sort of treatment might be appropriate. So knowing these simple things can make a difference and can help inform the therapist. Now also, you may be able to use telehealth and, and apps associated with telehealth and collect information about your arm or your or your fingers or your hand or whatever. 
And there are lots of them out. Lymphotrack is a particularly good one. Um, you can record garment use. You can record some circumferences and volumes of your limb. You can put the data in there just with a simple tape measure. Okay, or sometimes you just take a photograph of your limb and that helps see how it's progressing. And this information via an app is good because it can be shared with your therapist when you see them. There are other very good learning programs around. Can Detect is one developed by, um, by one of my PhD students at the Institute of Lymphedema. This will soon be available for you to learn a lot more about lymphedema online. Now, what can we do with your lymphedema or your risk of lymphedema? What can we do in terms of treatment and management of it? Well, we can all do better job at skin care, okay? Dry skin with breaks in it means there's a, the barrier between the external environment and your internal environment is not as good. Make it stronger. The other thing that's important is activity, exercise and breathing. So for instance, right now, just sit back or stand up and open up your arms. Take a deep breath as you're opening up your arms like you're welcoming someone. Move your arms and your hands right back while you're breathing in deeply. Hold it there for two seconds. Now breathe out again. Bring your arms back to your chest as I'm doing right now. Breathe out. Do it again five times. Breathing in. Yes, hold it and then breathe out again. That is really going to help clear the areas here in your chest of the fluid. And because you're squeezing your muscles in your arms, it means you're going to create a pressure gradient and fluids are going to move from your arms, from your hands, from your fingers, into the upper arm, into your chest, into the lymphatics, into the veins and be taken away. So breathing is great. Tai Chi, Qigong, all those sorts of breathing are wonderful. Yoga is wonderful. Then of course is self, partner and therapist massage. And I'll give you some massage sheets that you can see about massaging the left and right arm. You can do it yourself, do it gently, do it lightly according to instructions, but always breathe first. The other management areas are compression, bandages, garments and wraps, diet and weight management, and importantly in your area where it may be warm most of the year, water-based activity. Water is wonderful because it supplies coolness sometimes, it provides external pressure and an environment in which you can comfortably move. So I want you to just remember very simple things can help lymph flow. G deep breathing, gentle muscles, like just move your hands like this right now, move your arms like that, just slowly and gently as in yoga and Tai Chi, you know, slow. That's helping vary the pressure around the lymphatics, helping the lymph to move into the lymphatics and then along them. There are lots of things that do this too. Massage pads, electrical stimulation, all those sort of things can help in terms of muscle movement. But remember, always if you're using garments, if you're treating or doing anything, empty the buckets first. Remember, if I've got a glass full of water, or a bucket full of water, I can't put any more in there until I've emptied it out. So empty the buckets first before you put a garment on or before you take it off or before you do any self massage. Super important. Now here's a picture of my breathing programs uh, that we've done clinical trials on. They work very well. And like I said, I'll make a, 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 an information sheet of breathing available to you so you can actually take it home and do it five times, five times a day. Absolutely wonderful, it makes a difference. The most important ones are in the morning when you wake up and when you go just before you go to bed in the evenings. Okay, so what we see here now is muscles. Now, what you're about to see, I hope, if, the, if it works, is our muscles moving and what it can actually do to our lymphatic system. Okay, it's not coming up, unfortunately. So um, we'll come back to that a little bit later. So what I now want to have a look at is compression. Compression can be achieved from bandaging. Your therapist will consider the impact of short versus medium versus long stretch. What sort of bandaging do you need best? Um, it's not a decision you can make easily. However, garments are important. Garments can supply compression. Your therapist will consider the impact of knit type, what you want. But you know, if you want, you can feel comfortable going to a chemist, for instance, and getting a light compression garment with a good pressure gradient. 
Or if you're in, if if you are unable to contact a therapist and have dealings with them about what's an optimum garment for you, you can always feel free to contact one of the garment supplying companies. They'll supply you with information about their particular garments and what might be best for you. The other thing that's becoming more prominent at the moment are something called wraps. These are garments, but they can be adjusted. As your arm gets smaller, you can actually adjust the pressure down or up, and you can make the limb get smaller and smaller and smaller by adjusting the pressure appropriately. You do need some advice generally about using wraps because you must maintain a, the right pressure and importantly, a good pressure gradient. The other thing that's becoming increasingly important are intermittent pneumatic compression devices. There are a range of these for arms available and a lot of them are rentable. For instance, through Opal and other groups, um, they have them available for short-term rent. And I always say, try before you buy rent don't buy it until you know it works for you the other or last thing about compression being in water how wonderful it is to be in water because you have good compression you have a good compression gradient just remember what compression does is it squeezes the tissue down from the top of the skin here down onto the deep musculature here and makes this area here a little bit smaller and pushes all the fluids and all the contents out of this compressed area into a non-compressed area. That's what's important to do. Compression, get rid of the fluids. Now, however, some, fluid, some situations of pressure may not be the best for you. They may be a problem. And here's an example of a bra, for instance. See this bra strap here and there and the side panels and the underwire? This is not good for lymphatic drainage from the arm because it would like to come up here to this area where my laser is now, but it can't because of the pressure of the bra strap. So watch out always, please, for constant external pressure in the wrong spot. You can remediate this by using a little, going to a chemist shop and getting a pad to put under your bra strap to spread the pressure out if you want. But just be careful of this, constant external pressure in the wrong place and also shallow breathing. Take some nice deep breaths every now and then. That's going to make a difference to your lymphatic system drainage. Let's get back now to water therapy. All base, all forms of water therapy are absolutely fantastic. They help vary the tissue pressures. They provide an external pressure gradient, which is great. They support your body and the tissues. The pressure varies as we move. So in moving and being in the water and moving your arms while you're breathing, and that is absolutely fantastic because that's creating pressure on your lymphatic system and helping load the fluids into your lymphatic system and be taken away as you breathe. Helps cool the body as well. And the Encore program, which is based in Western Australia also, I gather, is got such a range of activities available as water-based therapies. But nevertheless, if there's a pool nearby or there's some nice ocean water nearby, watch out for the crocodiles. Um, it's beneficial to be in it. Getting back to normal lymph flow, I want to re-emphasize what I said earlier. From an arm, it's around about five mils an hour, 100 mils per day. So no, you don't have to do a lot to improve your limb. But likewise, conversely, a five mils a day increasing in your arm is 35 mils at the end of a week, is 140 mils at the end of a month. And there's lymphedema. But again, if you can take that extra five mils away, your lymphedema is going away by 140 mils, just because you're moving five mils per day. Per, per hour different or five meals per day different. Little things make a big difference. So please think about the small things. They're the things that can make a difference for you. Small changes make a big difference with the lymphatic system. Be confident in knowing what to do. That's what my talk today is about, giving you confidence, knowing what you're doing, that you're moving fluids into the lymphatic system away from the, the affected arm and you're improving the cell and tissue health by doing that. So the key messages of my talk so far, number one, make sure you can identify or your therapist or your GP can help you with early identification of changes which have occurred in your limb if you only just had surgery or radiotherapy. Okay, earlier you treat it, the earlier you identify it, the better off you are. Always look at early intervention. Don't say let's sit back and wait and see what's going to happen. Get in and do something. Be proactive. If, uh, if you can, super important. And likewise, by 
collecting some information, knowing something about your arm or your fingers or your hand, we, it allows us better targeted and sequenced treatment. For instance, if, if you have a positive stemocyte and there's lots of fibre here in your arm or in your armpit, it, it, it's, it means that the outcome of massage may not be as good because the fibre will stop the lymph fluid from working, being removed, your treatments from working. But nevertheless, irrespective of what's going on, you, your partner or your carer can make a difference. You can, in, you can be looking forward to more independence for your management if you want to do it by using some knowledge. It's not a lot you have to do, but it's something that if you do it, is going to help you make a difference. And on that basis, think, assess, treat and manage holistically. Big picture stuff. Because remember, all the fluid from your fingertips here has to go through your forearm, has to go through your upper arm, has to go through your to your top of your shoulder here, has to then go into the blood. And if we can empty, make that pathway work better, we're going to get a better outcome for you for your lymphedema. So now my important points, I guess, are about this, about how to live well with lymphedema and um, how to make a difference. Do it in a partnership. Explore the treatment options. Know what you want. What are you looking for? A reduction in the size of your limb? Is this important? Improvement in how the limb feels? Better ability to undertake the activities of life or improve function? Do you want to be able to move your arm up higher or, or do whatever? Make sure you're aware of what you want to, want to do and let your therapist know that when you visit them. But also know what you can, that is, will be able to do and what you can't do. You know, that's very really important. Let them know. Be aware of it yourself. Now, the other two most important points are the ones coming up now. Do only one thing different at a time, because then you know what works. If I do 10 things different at a time, change 10 different things, I have no idea which one of them working, and I might not need all 10 of them. So one thing different at a time, see what works, then add something else onto it if you want to. Then add something else on until you got the perfect treatment match. The other most important thing is try before you buy. There's a lot of poorly evidenced stuff out there on the internet, okay? And there's a lot of rubbish out there, to be honest. But then again, there's a lot of really good things. Make sure that you try before you buy and you go for quality, well-evidenced products. That's really important in the literature. And the therapists and all of us are out there to help you what's well-evidenced. OK, you can do that via teleconsult and find out what's appropriate for you if you don't get a chance to go and see them face to face. There are some very, very good websites uh, available which have got good information for you as a patient. The Australasian Lymphology Association website is good. And we now have the LAA, the Lymphedema Association of Australia, which is associated with the ALA, which is there for the patients for you. There's also a wonderful patient section on the British Lymphology Society site in the UK about the BLS and about what that can offer you. Some other websites, the Canadian one, the National Lymphedema Network of the USA and the International Lymphedema Framework have all got good information. But the first two, I've got to say, are absolutely wonderful and that's probably all you need. But look at good quality websites only, please. Okay. The, the most important thing out of my whole talk today is thinking holistically in a partnership, okay? Think the big body stuff. Remember what you're trying to do. You're trying to get the lymphatic system to work better, to drain better from your, your arm into the blood vessels and be taken away, okay? It's in, in a partnership that you're doing all of this. So thank you for watching and listening. I hope it's helped you be a little bit more confident in what you can do. Um, and like I said before, I'm going to make available through BCNA a copy of this talk in a PDF format, and I'll give you access to copies of risk assessment and self-massage forms and, and breathing forms, which you can then utilize and um, help you make a big difference. So again, thank you very much for listening and uh, look forward to good outcomes.